Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Good afternoon to colleagues and persons who are glued to the television sets and whatever other devices that they may be using watching the proceedings across the diaspora. Mr. Speaker, it is with a feeling of utmost confidence, one of fulfillment of total accomplishment that I stand in, in this honorable house to make my contribution to this discourse on the estimates of 2024-2025. A motion which has every ounce of support I can probably muster, Mr. Speaker, and estimates which prove beyond an iota of doubt that this good country of ours is being managed far better than what obtained between 2016 and 2021. Within that period, Mr. Speaker, I dare say we were on a path of financial destruction. But before delving into what the business of the day is, Mr. Speaker, I am confronted with the compunction to take a cursory glance at some peripheral issues that from time immemorial have guided the proceedings of this August Chamber within the confines of which ought to be the emphatic supposition that this chamber contains honorable men and women. Please permit me to do so, Mr. Speaker, as your indulgence is craved in that regard. We were here on Tuesday, Mr. Speaker, Tuesday morning to be exact, and the Standing Finance Committee met to review the estimates. The evening that ensued, the Prime Minister delivered his address, an address which in a nutshell was an extraction from the estimates which, with which we were provided at least eight credits before. I will go further to say, Mr. Speaker, that there was absolutely nothing said by the Prime Minister that could not have been found in the estimates. So the question as to why you need the Prime Minister's speech to rebut a book that you had in your possession for eight days just cannot seem to find justification in my mind. But you know, Mr. Speaker, when we expect honorable men to follow a custom like the leader of the opposition responding immediately after the prime minister. When that is breached, anything can be breached. In fact, we've grown accustomed, Mr. Speaker, of things no longer being accustomed inside of this house. For five years, this house operated without a deputy speaker, Mr. Speaker. When this house first convened after the general election of 2016, a question was asked to the then Prime Minister. Why was this blatant transgression of the Constitution? Which mandates that Parliament is convened within 30 days after the holding of a general election? And with a certain degree of sarcasm, he responded that the Constitution led no sanctions. And this is the environment, Mr. Speaker, in which we operate. But all of a sudden, Mr. Speaker, all of a sudden, certain persons have become constitutional experts. They have become constitutional experts because it suits the narrative, so to do. But this is hypocrisy of the highest order. Mr. Speaker, there is a Latin term that goes, nemo dat non quod habit. It basically means that one cannot give, and for purposes of the estimates, one cannot spend 
what he or she does not have. And as we navigate the figures contained in the estimates, Mr. Speaker, and others prior, because you see it is necessary to juxtapose the estimates of today to the estimates of yesterday, because yesterday's behavior is what determines what happens today. And so, Mr. Speaker, as we navigate the estimates of this year and other financial years, prior, a very and extremely promising picture is painted for the future of this great country of ours. Mr. Speaker, if we take a look at our recurrent expenditure for a number of years and compare with our recurrent revenue for those years, you will see a very gloomy picture painted between 2016 and 2021. And from there on, when the driver of this economic truck was changed or economic car was changed, you will see a closure in the gap and a much, much better performance. Mr. Speaker, as the estimates will show and I will point you to, this country is undoubtedly on the path of recovery. The country is beginning to breathe a sigh of relief. Relief that was very much needed. And to illustrate, Mr. Speaker, the estimates of this upcoming financial year, we will look at it and juxtapose, like I said, Mr. Speaker, to have a better or full understanding of the mismanagement that occurred between 2016 and 2021 and the path of recovery on which the country found itself when there was this glorious day on our calendar labeled July 26, 2021. Mr. Speaker, I can go as far back as the financial year 2016-2017. And I want you to listen carefully, Mr. Speaker. 2016-2017, our recurrent revenue was $1.04 billion, whilst our recurrent expenditure was $1.08 billion, a shortfall, Mr. Speaker, of $43 million. Financial year 2017-2018, our recurrent revenue, Mr. Speaker, was $1.073 billion, whilst our recurrent expenditure increased to $1.151 billion. Again, a shortfall of $78 million of recurrent expenditure over recurrent revenue. Mr. Speaker, we go to the financial year of 2018 to 2019. The country generated $1.69 billion in revenue. But again, for that very year, there was an increase in recurrent expenditure to $1.268 billion, further widening the deficit gap between revenue and expenditure. That gap, Mr. Speaker, by 2018-2019, a mere two years after the last government assumed office, had almost increased by a hundred million dollars. Yes, Mr. Speaker, that was what they were doing. They were spending much more than they were making. And I remember the old saying, Mr. Speaker, don't talk to so-and-so because he spends money like a child that has never seen toys. I wouldn't quote the author, neither would I quote whoever that statement was targeted at. But Mr. Speaker, let us go to 2019-2020. The country, and this is very, very instructive, because for too many times, I have heard persons hide under the guise of COVID. I have heard all sorts of excuses 
being proffered because of the bad economic performance. No one dared to challenge the mismanagement of the then Prime Minister. Everybody took umbrage, took shelter. COVID was basically the shield for mismanagement of this country. Mr. Speaker, the year 2019-2020 is instructive in that regard. In 2019-2020, the country made even more money than it made in 2018-2019. Okay. Gouvernement fait plus l'argent à 2019-2020. L'ande a yo ka di la ten Covid la. Il fait plus l'argent passé l'année avant. But guess what, Mr. Speaker? The country made 1.15 billion dollars. However, under the last Minister of Finance, expenses grew every year. And so our recurrent expenditure had risen from 1.268 billion from the previous year to 1.344 billion. Leaving us, Mr. Speaker, with a shortfall of $190 million. about that Mam Miku South. C'était premier ministre. Là, il vient, l'argent nous a fait, il a dépensé le prix. Nous avons fait le prix, il a commencé à dépenser le prix. Et il a dépensé juste à temps. 2019, 2020, il a dépensé presque 200 millions de dollars. Parce que le pays a été fait, Mr. Speaker. Now, let me pause here because they'll tell you 2019 2020 was when covid hit mr speaker nothing can be further from the truth in terms of performance of 2019 2020 you have a gap of 200 million dollars but covid mr speaker we must not forget our financial year runs from the 1st of April to March 31st. So in 2019, 2020, run from April 1st, 2019 to March 31st, 2020. In that year, we generated the most revenue. COVID hit Yuan China in December of 2019. And we had no introduction to COVID, not almost at the close of the 2019-2020 financial year. February, March. So the question is, Mr. Speaker, what accounted for that $200 million gap before COVID? I need to know. That's what we need to know. JP a COVID le set lisien. Premier ministre la nan pou mi kou sa ouf. Te han yon gap. Kon yon te ka depose trop pli l'ajan pase yon ka fe. Ek a vo COVID vini. Yon ve pli l'ajan. Me yon depose 200 million dollar plis pase yon ka fe. Sa ouf e pi. What did you do with it, young man? You know, and didn't want to blame COVID. And then, Mr. Speaker, you know, <laughs> I don't have to stop blaming COVID because the, the figures are there, the numbers are there, everything is right there. You know, you can buy COVID, tout bagay say COVID, COVID, COVID. In the first four years, in the first four years of the member of Miku South taking over the Ministry of Finance or Prime Ministership of this country, the deficit gap widened. In his first year, it was 43. He's spending $43 million more than he's making. In his second year, 78 million, the gap widened. In his third year, 100 million. 
in his fourth year, $190 million. He's spending more than he's making. COVID was nowhere around. COVID was nowhere around, Mr. Speaker. And there is no doubt, Mr. Speaker, at this time, the prospects of this country have almost returned to a degree of normalcy. That was mismanagement, mismanagement to the T. Mr. Speaker, for the financial year 2020, 2021, Mr. Speaker, there was an expectation, and look at this. You started, for your first four years, you have spent much, you started by spending $43 million more than you making. You go up to 78, you go up to 100, you go up to $190 million spending more than you are making. COVID hit us 2020-2021. And there is no doubt that COVID hit the, everybody. But guess what, Mr. Speaker? There was an expectation for that financial year, our revenue would decrease. So, I'm going to say, Daniel Anea, I'm going to say, 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 but folks, you will not believe this. You will not believe this. Tout moun ki ka fa, tout pet toa va yo. Se pa lè sa ou ka yon ay me stek. Sou pet toa va yo. Se pa lè sa ou ka yon achete Johnny Walker Black Pou Bwè a don ka ba we. Sou pet toa va yo ka ma we we ou. E kou ka di se pou dou bout de pase. Mr. Speaker, you will not believe. When COVID hit us and revenue decrease, to under $900 million, the man increased his expenditure the most in his five years to $1.36 billion, leaving a gap of almost $500 million. Body Sarkoyal. Mr. Speaker, Le Mam Mikusau Sete Premier Minister. Depuis Kumase, il commence à dépenser plus l'argent parce qu'il était café. Ils il savent que COVID est venu et la rente est baissé. Tout le monde a eu la caille sur le de travail, sur le de la ou une chaise scotch, ou quand j'ai mis les scotch, mis chaise ou, ou quand j'ai mis sans chaise. Une stop ou quand j'ai mis stop ou dans les Mais pas pour le premier ministre là, rather than que telling his expenses, during the COVID year, the man recurrent expenditure was at his highest, leaving a gap of $500 million almost. You know? So look at shortfall the man have had from 43 million, 78 million, 100 million, 200 million, $500 million. And you talk about you were managing the economy. You know, you know, almost half a billion dollars in shortfall. Wasn't that a time when you know your revenue would decrease? You decrease your expenses? But Mr. Speaker, no. No. <laughs> and this man has the audacity to say, he has the audacity to say that he was fixing the economy, Mr. Speaker. Fixing which economy, Mr. Speaker? Ki economy iteka iteka wa here, Mr. Speaker? Moble sab because I really want to know which economy he was fixing. You know, Mr. Speaker, how can you fix an economy when you pay a man forty thousand dollars to cut one tree? Huh? How can you? How can you fix an economy, Mr. Speaker, when you pay a man in Masha $12,500 to hang a door? $12,500 to put up a door. $40,000 to cut a tree at the comprehensive school. You know, and earlier on, Mr. Speaker, he called on us to make sacrifices. 
But that is the same man who was spending 2,000 a night, 2,000 pounds a night. As a matter of fact, let me show, I said, let me show it, Mr. Speaker, if you don't mind. Show me the $2,000 pounds a night bill. Not the, yeah, the bills, please. Yes, the bills, yeah, let's go to Okay, that's the total bill. Show them the total bill. Okay, the total, you can you zoom, zoom in, please? Total bill, 13,000 pounds. Show them the nights. Document, I will make it a document that I'll show them the nights. Can you zoom that out? Look at them. One, two nights each night, 2,154 pounds. Show the back page. I, look at that. Look, another three nights. Each night, 2,154 pounds. And show the last page again to see whose name is on the bill again, the 13,000 pounds. You're right. Show the, the name at the top for me, please. Please, zoom out. <laughs> Show that name. Yeah, scroll down. Right. Whose name you see there? Not mine. That's not my name. That's the same man asking us to make sacrifices, Mr. Speaker. 2,154 pounds. The tax. The tax. The total is 13,000 pounds. For six nights, at the time the pound was five dollars, sixty-five thousand dollars for six nights. You know, you could take it down, Brendan. And you are now asking us to make sacrifices. Two thousand. And you know the worst thing? When the prime minister indicated that earlier, he said, "You're just say things without evidence." You know, say things without evidence. 2,154 pounds a night. Ek le septlisye, a padisa, i pe 65 mil dola pou si swe. Ou sa? Yo, jis la, nou jis pe pou lave hadyo. Pa mem hadyo yon te ka pe pou lave. Yo me yale a taxpayers. And you know, you come in inside of here. This one suffers. Mr. Speaker, permit me to make this word. I coined this word, serotism. <laughs> this one suffers from an acute bout of serotism. You know, and coming in here, coming in here and ask us to, to you know, the man talks about travel, travel. Mr. Speaker, I can say without self-contradiction, the man was the most traveled minister in the history of this country. And he was the minister of tourism with the biggest allocations. And the member from Miku North, from Castries North can tell you, when he was prime minister, this man's budget was 50 and 60 million dollars. But what did he do with it? Pay airlines to fly her empty. And today, Mr. Speaker, today, you know, without a degree, any degree of shame, he will talk about, um, you know, we need to make sacrifices. And Mr. Speaker, you heard him. He referred to the Bannon land. He referred, you know, Mr. Speaker, when you live in a glass house, you don't throw stones. That was the man who was prime minister in his cabinet. His entire cabinet took a decision to sell to a member of cabinet government land at 69 cents a square foot. He is the same prime minister whose chairman of NSC got land in Marigo at less than $2 a square foot. He is the same prime minister who permitted the then member for Castri Southeast to put land on his sister's name at VG. Yes. I'm not asking you, I'm telling you, Mr. Speaker, and I can sh show the deeds and make them documents of the house. You don't play with fire. <laughs> you don't play with fire. And then has the audacity to say that the dying ball was a good move because we're getting rent for $4 a square foot. You know, we had our mall, Mr. Speaker. We spent, the mall was bought when the member from uh, Castries North was Prime Minister. We spent $52 million on the mall. At the time, the mall was valued at $60 million. 
you sold it for less than a quarter of the value tied the government hands for 16 and a half years at over a million dollars a month with a cumulative rent payment of over 200 million dollars and then turn around and tell the people of St. Lucia you give them a good deal you give them a good deal I want to buy Gables Wood Mall the same way Gables Woods Mall I want to buy it you know and that is the audacity of this gentleman Mr. Speaker that is the audacity of this gentleman Cabot bought land a dollar an acre a St. Lucian bought land two point something acres for 2.7 million dollars the audacity of this man Mr. Speaker but Mr. Speaker let me let me go on I can say Mr. Speaker without fear of contradiction that for every year the member from Miku South who seemingly pontificates on the altar of knowledge a financial guru under his watch every single year our recurrent revenue was far less than our recurrent expenditure which increased every year the expenditure increased every year under his watch and the gap widened when he left it almost 500 million dollars difference mr speaker and he has the audacity to say mr speaker that he did he did well he did well and you know mr speaker a lot of the things that caused that design finance construct giving dsc's all over the place principal payment payments to be made every three months interest every month every month sorry doubling our rental expense which is a recurrent expenditure he got it at 30 million dollars dropped it at almost 70 million a year including five offices from his father mr speaker and has the audacity to say he was fixing the economy and we need to make sacrifices mr speaker but that was what saint lucia was going through under his watch and had we remained along that trajectory mr speaker by now saint lucia would have been sold to the devil if we had remained that way simply city heaven by day more and mind you mr speaker whilst you know look at this you know mr speaker the month to consultants paying them 15 million or so a year to teach him how to widen the deficit gap you mean you need a consultant to tell you you should have taken a housewife to help you prepare the budget every housewife in this country knows that when you have five hundred dollars you know a bag of sugar is this or this is that in lucy like is this that is that and they can budget mr speaker within the limitation of the monies that they have you needed a, 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 a one of the single mothers that he, he called he called whatever he called them he needed one of them to give him a lesson in economics mr speaker that's what you need that's what you need now mr speaker the right honorable prime minister member for castries east took over the navigational economic car or apparatus of fair helen on july 26. this financial year is the only financial year crafted and presented by the prime minister in other words when we came in the budget of 2021 2022 
had been prepared. We inherited a budget. It was not that of the member for Castries East. His first budget crafted by himself with the use of civil servants who know our plight, who are born St. Lucians, whose tenacity I admire, wanted to stand by the Prime Minister and to show some resolve that what we were not permitted to do, you have now given us the latitude to do it. Let us help you prepare a budget. Mr. Speaker, you will not believe if we look at the numbers of 2023, 2024, what they are. Mr. Speaker, the estimates of 2023, 2024, which the current Prime Minister had full control over, the recurrent revenue, his first Shastefe Seklene, a tout Seklene, a tout like a deposit prilage of Passe Cafe. The first estimates, the first budget, budget crafted by this Prime Minister, the recurrent revenue, Mr. Speaker, was $1.25 billion, whilst there was a significant reduction in recurrent expenses to $1.24 billion. In his first budget, he was able to, his, ex, his revenue surpassed his expenses. I believe this Prime Minister deserves a round of applause. <coughs> yes, Mr. Speaker, you know, come in. Yes, Mr. Speaker, that is what it is. And the books are there. So when a man tells you that he is a guru, economic or otherwise, let the numbers tell a tale. And so, Mr. Speaker, in the first budget of this Honorable Prime Minister, there was a savings. There was a savings of about $4 billion. Something that the former Prime Minister had never achieved. And then, Mr. Speaker, 2023-2024, expenditure, 1.3 billion. Revenue, 1.375 billion. In his second year, this Prime Minister not only closed the gap and surpassed it by he surpassed it by some 75 million dollars that could have gone into capital expenditure mr speaker that is how you judge the management skill of one who has the levers of authority mr speaker and that is how you manage an economy and you know the figures don't lie the figures don't lie mr speaker the figures don't lie. You know, Mr. Speaker, this country was like a car, driven by a madman at a high speed towards a precipice of economic disaster. And you know, the good Lord lent a hand, Mr. Speaker, and caused a change of driver, a new driver, a more capable driver, a more experienced driver. And upon being placed in that driver's seat, he immediately pressed the brake pedal, Mr. Speaker, stopped the dive of this country into economic turmoil, turned the car around, and now we are driving on a road with utmost stability on the highway of recovery bound for eternal prosperity. That's what we are doing now, Mr. Speaker, under this able hand, Mr. Speaker. St. Lucia will get there. St. Lucia will get there, Mr. Speaker. So when you see the hacks want to debate, they will not debate facts. They will just go out of the way. Give me the estimates. 
Let's look at the estimates of revenue and expenditure. Show me your five years, I'll show you my five years. Who manage the economy better? That is what we need to know. And then they'll tell you COVID. You had a, a deficit from day one. By the time COVID came, you had a gap of about $200 million in that financial year. COVID, when COVID came, Mr. Speaker, it is a take off for Avid. Cough up at You know? And the facts are there. I'm not making them up. I'm not making them up, Mr. Speaker. I'm not making them up. Mr. Speaker, I cannot, and none of us can take. How much time I have left, Mr. Speaker? 45 minutes? <laughs> 28? Yeah, I thought it was 45. Okay, very good. Yeah, okay. Mr. Speaker, I cannot and none of us can take our various allocations as per the estimates and expound on all of them. We can't. Time does not permit that. But I will select some of the allocations worthy of mention, Mr. Speaker. Some of them I want to deal with, Mr. Speaker. And they are the allocation to Proud, the allocation for cemetery expansion, the allocation for the rehabilitation of human resources, and the allocation of the housing assistance program, among others, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, when this government assumed office, I was inundated with calls from contractors, Mr. Speaker, who we had not contracted, who basically I knew absolutely nothing about their work, Mr. Speaker. But having assumed the portfolio, they want to believe that I am the one who is responsible for payment that were due to them under the PROUD program, Program for the Rehabilitation of an Unplanned Development. And so, Mr. Speaker, the calls kept coming. My intervention was being sought. At certain points, I felt it appeared that I was the one holding back the payments of those persons, and I want to make it clear, they had completed their work under the former administration. They were employed and contracted by the former administration. But Mr. Speaker, because I know of the phenomenon that there is continuance in governance, I place the plight on the doorstep of the Honorable Prime Minister. I felt sorry for them. And so I indicated to the Prime Minister, who agreed and placed in the budget on the head 0052, three million dollars necessary to pay those contractors who had worked under Flabo and Flabo never paid them. So I can tell Mr. Jameson, I can tell Dean Nicholas, I can tell all of those who had been literally humbugging me for payment that I took your case to the Honorable Prime Minister and he indicated when I said to him, boss, the guys have outstanding bills totaling $3 million, he said to me, minister, we must pay the fellas. And he made provision to pay them. So I'm hoping you hand me, James, and I'm hoping you hand me, Dean Nicholas, and all the others that work under proud, that your money was due since before I was minister, because because uh, Okay? So, folks, <laughs> folks, I swear I'm on my shoe. Sorry, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, <laughs> so, Mr. Speaker, those contractors, yes, they were employed by Flabo, they work on the Flabo, and they were basically disregarded by Flabo. But guess what? The Labour Party, under this Honorable Prime Minister, say, no, we have to pay them. 
I'm talking about proud Mr. Speaker. Since we came into office, we have empowered over 200 poor St. Lucians by giving them deeds, giving them titles to property on which they live, giving them a sense of empowerment that they never had in their lives before. Empowerment that can cause generational changes, Mr. Speaker. Only two weeks ago, we handed 19 deeds, 19 deeds to persons from various localities, Mr. Speaker, from across the length and breadth of this island. And one of them was very touching, Mr. Speaker. One of the ladies I handed a deed to was a sanitation worker from Viewfort who had given the government and people of St. Lucia over 30 years in the sanitation department. Today, Mr. Speaker, she has a fair slice of St. Lucia. She has title to a piece of land that she can call her own, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, ironically, this lady is from the same jurisdiction, the same jurisdiction where at the stroke of a pen, a foreigner was given a thousand acres at a dollar an acre for 99 years. And I see this, Mr. Speaker, as a semblance of poetic justice, Mr. Speaker. I look to my right, not immediate right, second right, and I notice my, my colleague from Sufre, Mr. Speaker, when we assumed office, and when I say, I can say without fair of contradiction, that the member for Sufre will beg for her constituency until her needs are met, Mr. Speaker, on behalf of her people, Mr. Speaker. That is the admiration I have for my colleague, sister. And you know, she came to cabinet and she said, Minister, l'agence est mon mon cadouéa. And fait gouvernement And Mr. Speaker, I can tell you, the government forgave almost a million dollars to forgive the credit union who ended up forgiving the lenders. And today, people of Sufre have land and title to their property as a result of this government through intervention by the rep. What more you need? What more you need? Isn't that empowerment, Mr. Speaker? Isn't that empowerment? You know, Mr. Speaker, as I speak, and I don't want to be adopting the term from the member from Viewfort South for fear that the people have already gone home. Yes, and it's quarter to five. But I can tell you, we have over a thousand lots, Mr. Speaker, in, 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 in Labry, Auger, um, and Viewfort North, Viewforts in, the, in that general over a thousand deeds, over a thousand lots awaiting mutation and eventual transfer to St. Lucians, not to foreigners, Mr. Speaker. We have an allocation of $2.16 million on the head 0366 for the continuation of the housing repair. Now, you know, Mr. Speaker, this program is yet another innovative program of this government, Mr. Speaker. Never before had it existed. It is a brainchild of this government. And when the Minister of Finance allocated those, those funds, Mr. Speaker, you know, given the humanitarian bone that seemingly occupy his entire body in Bocheton, he has to ensure that the allocations are spread across the length and breadth of St. Lucia in every constituency. I think it is a round of applause. Because you know the benevolence of the member for Castries East is not one you would find in the average man. And I'm not sure, Mr. Speaker, even with my religious virtues and all my principles of forgiveness, that I may have exercised such benevolence. But again, he is a godly character, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, he has not done like the former Prime Minister who for the five years between 2016 and 2021 thought the resources of this country were his. 
He thought the resources of the country were his, Mr. Speaker, and he did not spend one cent. And I don't exaggerate here if I say one cent. Not one cent in the other six constituencies that did not support him. In fact, Mr. Remember Speaker... You have 15 minutes left. In fact, Mr. Speaker, I remember that he was in opposition, and it was right here I was watching the proceedings, Mr. Speaker, and in this chamber, the member for Castries East lamented, why y'all are giving us nothing? Why? And the then extremely verbose uh, uh, mi uh, minister of economic development at the time, the member for Castries East Southeast, he said, for that you crying, y'all just not crying. I remember that. Because the member for, for Castries East was saying, why are you doing that to our people, Mr. Speaker? That is the response he got, Mr. Speaker. You know? But today, this Minister of Finance, this man with a good heart, is not treating the opposition that way, Mr. Speaker. Today, we are helping thousands and thousands of St. Lucians. But guess what, Mr. Speaker? The member from Miku North, he takes the housing allocation. Let me show you what he did with it. I mean, they give you the money to help build houses. Mon vle set li siye wè ki sa, mam miku sa ou fla fè ba yo jan miku. Gade yi la. Bode oblige bat li. How can you tell me you building that for a constituent of yours? In miku sa ou? The allocation of the member for miku sa ou, se sa yi vè bi. That is wickedness, Mr. Speaker. You might as well give the person a warrant to kill themselves. If I, Mr. Speaker, man like me, when I blow, I blow hard. That is down. You know? And if you compare that to the others built by my colleagues, you can show them in the meantime. But that is wickedness. That is pure wickedness. That's Denry, Denry North, Mr. Speaker. Just go ahead with them. You know? <laughs> and, and, and look at the difference, Mr. Speaker. Look at the difference. Look at the difference, Mr. Speaker. Who really cares about who? Who cares about who? You know? You are, you are, oh, hey, I see a man on my TV. <laughs> <laughs> who cares about who, Mr. Speaker? You telling me you have the audacity to give somebody that boise alimet, ale, ale boise alimet, ek di, sa so kayou fe bali? Sa so krev che, Mr. Speaker. Sa so krev che. But you know what, Mr. Speaker? They will not institute any program like that, Mr. Speaker. You can take it out. They will not, and they did not. And they accuse us of wasting money, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, when you hear a man talk about we waste money, but you know what, Mr. Speaker? He keeps his, when he was prime minister, his vehicle was on 24 seven from the time he leaves his house until he returns, until he returns. And when they ask him why, he said he has a problem with his skin. Show those two pictures for me. He has a problem with his skin, Mr. Speaker. Look at what he used to obtain. He could not even walk in the sun. He needed a police officer to have an umbrella over his head. Not even walk, he could walk in the sun. Look at that. Let's take a match. So let's kill him. Let's kill him. Let's kill him. Let's kill him. If Leo police che do power solar let tet li bodye se. Jodi a gasa e gafe. Show them what he's doing now for me, please. Gasa. Gaga gasa. You know? That's the same man who had his vehicle on at taxpayer's expense, Mr. Speaker. 24-7. That's the same man who could not take the heat because he has a skin condition. But today, Mr. Speaker, he wants to show he's like us. He wants to show he's like the citizens who foolishly or otherwise made him prime minister. The same citizens who made him, made him prime minister. Guess what? He barricaded them for five years. For five years. He didn't want to see them. They could not come around parliament. And it had to take a man like you, Mr. Speaker, to say that those barricades don't work with me. It had to take a man like you. Those barricades don't work with me. But the people voted for him tomorrow. 
today and tomorrow, he don't want to be surrounded by them, Mr. Speaker. Pa kite misye kwenezo, misye ka soufe exerotism. He came into office, he has an obsession of 15, Mr. Speaker. Came into office. FAR 15. <laughs> Yesterday, behind a van. PB 15. Go on the media. I want to speak. Number 15. <laughs> what did he not see? The Labour Party would give him 15. <laughs> he has an obsession with 15, Mr. Speaker. 15. You know, and that is what that that is what we have in this country. We have somebody who's parading, Mr. Speaker, to really do better for this country. But parading as though he really and truly cares about this country, but has wasted our resources. Wasted our resources. Asking him about our national dish, sauce and cucumber. You know, our national dish, Mr. Speaker, you know that is sauce and cucumber. <laughs> you know, that is the kind of thing we had, Mr. Speaker. Now, Mr. Speaker, let me quickly go into... And what we saw there behind the van. Ten more minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'll, I'll wrap up. What we saw there, there is spousal abuse, drug abuse. But to have a police officer in a black shirt, in a tie, behind a van, in the hot sun is police abuse. That is police abuse. And I'm sure he knows that anybody who rides to the back of the vehicle is uninsured. But that is his style. He pays country guard to the Lord, jumping behind a police motorbike with total impunity, Mr. Speaker. That is the behavior of this man to do what attract attention, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, I want to say we are working hard on the cemeteries. Hard on the cemeteries. Started the cemetery in Viewford. And that cemetery in Monrepo has a story. It has a story. Mr. Speaker, Miku North had never voted for the Labour Party. The cemetery in Monrepo went out of commission in 2016, the exact year that the United Workers' Party won the elections. Mr. Speaker, for five years between 2016 and 2021, not even an iota of intention in terms of preparation was made to have another cemetery commission. I can tell you, Mr. Speaker, the new MP from Miku North dragged myself, dragged my permanent secretary, dragged the Commissioner of Crown Lands into a meeting. And the long and short of it, Mr. Speaker, is that the Monrepo Cemetery is well on the way. And this financial year, we have $5 million there. We are completing phase one of the Monrepo Cemetery. It will be ready for burial, Mr. Speaker. That is how you represent people, Mr. Speaker. For five years, Jean Mopote Kanipu Vue, Tupatu. You vote by government. Say, come on, we. Jeremiah may more about shy pressure, but no quiet air. They are the wishes to a no government. We got this year approval, we got designs approved, and the cemetery is, has started. Work is progressing with alacrity. You know, and then you tell me you care about people. You don't care about people, you see them as instruments for occupation. Of, of, of a powerful position, that's all it is. Human resource centers, Mr. Speaker, I have 1.65 million dollars for human resource centers. Mr. Speaker, who pay for it? Who seek money? Mommy, who south? C'est le premier ministre et district rep pour Jodiga. Jodiga, bonjour. Lani au community center pour seek money. Il pas fait un rien, un rien, un rien là. Mr. Speaker, not even a sheet of galvanize he changed. Right now, the building has no roof, no windows, no doors. He got wind, Mr. Speaker, that the government intends to do something with it. Two weeks ago, he badges into a meeting, a council meeting, and will tell them that he has $150,000 allocation from CDP and he will use it to repair 
the Diga Community Center. I had to say to them, to tell him, in terms of policy, he cannot dictate to the government of this country which policy direction we go. We will listen, we may hear, but if we decide to extend the community center, if we decide to place it elsewhere, if we decide to convert this old derelict building to another institution, another to be used as something else, you cannot tell us what to do. So don't walk into a meeting and say, already is operating on the good conscience of the prime minister. He has an allocation of here. You know, he has an allocation. He has an allocation and he will use it to repair. Remember the you have five minutes left. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, those are the kind of things you encounter. I will tell him again that the policy direction of this country is not determined by him. He was the same one who told this current government that you have lost the right to speak. He was the same one who told civil servants, don't tell us what to do. But today, he wants to dictate policy to us. I want to let the member know that he does not know what our intentions are. And anybody that goes and intervenes government's property without permission, they will be arrested and charged for damage to property. We need to ensure that things are done in a manner that is in keeping with the protocol of the government of St. Lucia. That is what it is. So, Mr. Speaker, uh, all right, I, I have loads, but, you know, Mr. Speaker, I just want to say uh, that my constituency, I just love Castro Central. I have knocked on the doors four times and they have opened the doors. One said to me, for the upcoming elections, the doors are already ajar. <laughs> All you have to do, just give it a little nudge and it will be open. Because I know, I am confident, they are satisfied with my performance, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, what the last government did, I just want to mention this. They wanted to efface my name from the political arena, totally obliterate me, and they took they renamed Serenity Park, which is my brainchild, Mr. Speaker. Took the plaques, threw them away because they carried my name. And placed the Serenity Park in the name of George Mallet, who never represented Saint, who never represented San Susi, and who never conceptualized Serenity Park. They didn't even know how I named the park, Mr. Speaker. It was named on a competitive basis by all schools participating and a panel of judges choosing a name. And they just come, see Richard Frederick Abai, sir. But they didn't know that the good Lord wanted me back here. Mr. Speaker, and under the community tourism project, I know I will get an allocation for a construction of an amphitheater at Serenity Park for the people of Castry Central and others, but especially the good people of San Susi, whose roads I am tackling at this time. Mr. Speaker, with that said, obviously I had to cut myself short. I want to end with two quotes, Mr. Speaker. It was Michel Steele who said, we should all be on the side of good governance and protection of taxpayers' money. And Nicholas Bajgroen said, the biggest determinant in lives is culture, where you were born, and what the environment look like. But the second determinant is probably governance. Good governance or a certain kind of governance makes a huge difference in the lives of St. Lucians. And I'm sure, Mr. Speaker, it is quite conspicuous that the lives of average St. Lucians are changing, and they have changed drastically ever since this Labour Party government assumed office, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I will finally say here, George Odlam, a man whom I admired, comes to mind. And he said, Mr. Speaker, we know of his renowned phrase, this country is now on a trajectory of forward ever, backward never. And that is why each and every person around this table on the side of the government have no choice 
but to protect the victory for the people of this good country of ours. I thank you, Mr. Speaker.